This week on RSBNB Update, Wood Spirits are added to more drops. The Blood Reaver is nerfed, but the Unicorn saves the day. And Tank Armor gets a juicy life point boost. Are the next armors the new hot sauce? Plus Group Iron Man mid-level ranged and Porter Math. This is RSBNB Update, episode 1014, recorded Wednesday, November 27th, 2024. Blood Reavers and Unicorns. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of RSBNB Update this week. A bit of a skeleton crew going on, but we still got some folks from the RSVMB group Iron Man here this week. It's American Thanksgiving this week, so happy Thanksgiving to all the American folks out there. Uh, on the podcast this week, actually one of them, Faxi, welcome. Thank, thank you. Good to be here. And everybody's second favorite Australian, Pernasius, is also here. Welcome, welcome. Happy Gobble Gobble Day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, thank you very much. And thank you both. This is We're recording this on a Wednesday instead of Thursday for once. So thanks to these guys for being an accommodating for me being uh, out of touch tomorrow. We we normally do our Thanksgiving in October. And I always, I always feel like, you know, when it comes to the Canadian side of the Thanksgiving, we should just do ours with the Americans because, you know, there's some stuff going back to World War One and whatnot just... when we changed it. and. <sighs> Things get so cold so early up there. Like it, I hear stories about you guys actually eating things even like outside and stuff, and that sounds real nice. I'll be honest. Well, I mean, so, it's, it's early I October, know, which is still a little bit chilly and a little bit dark. Yeah. But ah, I mean, yeah. it depends. Anyways, of course, uh, Thanksgiving aside, weather aside, which you know, uh, I'm I'm snowed in until April now, as as it be. <laughs> um. We're going to discuss the uh, big patch notes this week to some of the the combat familiars, but the biggest, of course, being the Reaver, some tank armor changes, and just some other little patch notes, and then catch up with uh, what's new around the RSBNB group Iron Man team. But of course, I do want to give a big, big thank you to our experienced tier Patreon members, for whom without update would not be possible, and that's Amos Reed. Andrew C, Bladecom, Drama Free, Dominic R, Jason S, Jesse W, Kesky, Lemon Lodge, Mr. T, Ricky A, Ripeth, Rune Star, The Naked Captain, and Tim. Big huge thank you to all those people. You'll be hearing more about our Patreon offerings a little bit later in the podcast. But in the meantime, uh, if you want to follow along, full show notes can be found over at Update. Dot show. We also have our Discord over at update.show slash Discord, and the friends chat can be found in game at Bits Byte. So let's start uh, with the, uh, let's just start with some generalistic uh, patch notes uh, this week, because I, I, I feel like these ones are important with 110 woodcutting, fletching, and actually now Three fire making coming out. Yeah. Which I was a bit of a surprise. surprise. Fire making. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you look at the calendar; it says it says fire making now. So, you guess we'll just burn away to one ten. It, it is probably not terribly challenging to just Change we're making new logs. You can now burn the new logs. <laughs> However, yeah, more work for people. Surprise! <laughs> you weren't let, there already. We'll let fire making backfill later on, mm. but. <laughs> Uh, wood spirits have been added to loot tables across the game. So for normal, they have added right. them to the Lumbridge Catacombs, which include the Crawling Corpse Torsos, Warped Rats, Skeletons, Warped Bats, Corpse Archers, Scoblins, Corpse Mages, and Drigeth Nern, as well as Goblins in Lumbridge. will now drop normal wood spirits. These all used to drop regular logs. I don't know if they still do, but... The basic, the only people who are cutting basic logs, are the people who are training on these monsters. So fair enough. Yeah, doing... that's where the Slayer Master send you. Yeah, is these ones. Yeah. Um, oak also comes from the Lumbridge uh, catacombs, but a slightly different collection of creatures down there: warped rats, skeletons, warped bats, the corpse archers again, uh, scoblins, corpse mages, and dragon Nern, as well as goblins in Lumbridge and goblin raiders. Now we tear up a bit for Willow. We go to Rock Slugs, Ham Guards, Ice Warriors, Goblin Raiders, Cockatrices, and Pyrefans. That reminds me of early level yeah. Slayer there. 
I think that's what they're doing is like, if you look at this, uh, we've been looking at the Slayer task list recently for reasons, uh, because each one, each task requires a certain combat level before the masters will assign it to you. So they're kind of tiering these with the, like, the combat level you have for the task is the level of wood spirit you get ish. Uh, which fair enough, I guess. And like, I mean, in, in in an ideal world, that kind of lines up with where the where the wood is in terms of its level two. So, yep, right. Yep. Um, because teak is level thirty. Now moving on to that, ice warriors, tortoises, goblin raiders, cockatrices, the pyre fans again, basilisks, and jungle strike worms. The jungle strike worms are a bit of an odd one out here for me. Um, I mean, well, sure. I- they always drop teak uh, teak logs, um, two teak right. logs. So now they they're well, just going to drop the. I hope they drop them in more volume. That's actually one of the issues I think I have with all of this list, especially these early ones. Is like my assumption is that it, the the hatchet for this will work very similar to the to the pickaxe, where you need to like have an item in your inventory and use a hundred stone spirits to upgrade it. I I. And like with Stone Spirits, we had, you know, a couple of years to build up spirits in the economy so that like everybody had to buy 100, not the biggest deal. We all already have them in our banks. Um, I am worried that we're going to need 100 Oak Spirits each and that the Lovebridge Catacombs are just going to be full of people with Coroming. Yeah, like. yeah because <laughs> here's the deal here. In Did relation, you know? if we look at the Jungle Strike Worm in particular – um, it yeah. used to drop teak logs at a rate of 31 out of 512, and it used to drop 20 or 40 at a time. Yeah. They've kept the rate the same for the spirit, but the spirit drop is down to only eight. I'm better than one, but like if you needed to go and gather them yourself, those are going to be crowded. That's uh, yeah. So, uh, so is it a smart I move then? I would be these. Okay, or that. I don't that. know if that's smart or not, but I have the funds to just drop a mill on random, <laughs> random ass soul spirits. To, get get a thousand of each. On, I don't on, know about a thousand, but a, a, yeah, some. How many? On how many my, stone? On my main account, I bought a hundred of each and just banked them because we did a hundred yeah. stone spirits. I figured they'll do a hundred <laughs> each of these, so I've just banked a hundred of each. I expect it to be a very parallel process to Hmm. the pickaxe. And I don't know if that's true, but it seems like what Breezy was kind of talking through in like the live stream on it is that they're trying to make a lot of stuff more parallel. People love the mining and smithing. We're just going to do that. But again, uh, Hmm. strong work, you know, I mean, as we said, like the fletching yesterday, I mean, I can, I can make fletch bolts at 40. I can use them at 40, but I need 60 crafting to put a feather on them you know which is just dumb yeah exactly we will absolutely talk about ranged ammunition and ranged weapons at specific level tiers later in this episode but also same breezy god bless mon breezy lately actually yeah the whole put in the work he's uh, he's really he's he's really he's really um spreading his wings with the new designer title that he has recently yeah. So, well, and a lot of the stuff that's coming out is relative to the relevant to the things he's working on. So yeah. it makes sense. But uh, maple comes <laughs> from jelly, young grot worms, r- rarius, and moss giants. Yep, fair. All the mid level jellies yep. and grot worms are easy. Yeah, and moss giants actually. Moss, I was going to say moss giants are easy. Uh, and big bones. <laughs> Acadias are Anku, basilisk, grot worms, gladius, and moss giants. Um, mahogany is where we start going up a bit more. The Anku elites, Grotworms again, Greater Demons, and Corp Beast of all things. Corp always dropped mahogany is because like same as like the edge for planks for construction. It has a legacy drop for a large volume of them. I don't know what the volume on Stone Spirits is. Yeah, and and fun fact: if you look at the wiki page for any of these creatures we're mentioning, it will say November twenty fifth. Replace the logs with whatever wood spirit so it is a straight replacement they no longer okay. drop that the makes logs. Sense. <laughs> uh use come from spiritual rangers desert strike worms basilisk karasks ancient cavern skeletons and spirits frost dragons lava strike worms gladius uh scutarius uh capsarius and erets 
Yeah, I I think they're trying to compensate as a like fletching as a fletching ammo because you yeah. is the. I think that's what's happening here. Um, and again, all this will be better off when you know we get the re tier. That was a yeah. game jam. Well, so I think a lot of those dropped to you logs as well. But for also Stu fletching, was also man. on that game jam as well on that one. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Monster Two and Rob Breezy. Shout out. I mean, Stu is so much balanced stuff all over the place. That man is a yeah, absolutely strong work. Uh, magic uh, comes from Ice Strike Worms, Automaton Guardians that uh, Parnassius knows all about. Mature Grot Worms, <laughs> Kadarn Rangers, Lamp and Flora, Rune Dragons, Moss Golems, and Mazcab Raids. Yeah, they Mazcab Raids used to drop a boatload of magic logs, <laughs> so. And finally, Elder. and finally, Elder are Liverworths, Acheron Mammoths, Camel Warriors, Araxi, Solak, and Raids again. I want to make yep. a special note in a lot of these tiers, the like um, Maple through Magic ones are dropped by things, or no, Maple through you are dropped by things in the Catacombs of Ascension. <laughs> Um, which for anybody that wants to grind out, first off, God bless you, a, um, Ascension crossbow. Oh, Lord. you, uh, right. Well, you'll get a lot of these stone spirits in grinding this. And cause they're also, those creatures are also excellent Slayer XP. They are AFKable ranged experience, yep. like the Rorarii in that first room. <laughs> cause when you damage one of them, it well, aggroes the world around it. So it's, yep. yeah, it's a long <laughs> term. <laughs> lived there <laughs> long term AFKable ex- combat experience if you don't want to do something active like elite dungeons and you don't want to do slayer um, cough Shane so <laughs> that actually is very interesting to me that they're they're throwing on um, Rorarius are just going to give you maples but even that's like yeah well interesting to add in that those those drop tables so hmm. The U, I was the, the Capsarius, which uh, does the U. So I would, I was hoping they'd do magic, but that's okay. I've got those uh, in my uh, player own dungeon oh, sure. for the for the key drops. Yeah, um, they were they were brilliant to AFK for that. So you know, it's um, they don't do. Yeah. I, I, I've been I was calling for them to take logs off drop tables and bring in these stone spirits years ago, uh-huh. when everyone was yelling at me. So I'm <laughs> I'm really happy that they've done this because again, as a skiller, you know. The skilling raw skilling right. <laughs> product should come from skillers, not from monster drops. So I think this is a great step forward. Yeah, it makes more sense from a balance perspective. Yep, um, and I appreciate that. Like moss giants, and moss golems get appropriately leveled. Up. Like they put a lot of the like nature themed things to drop them as well. Um, mm. And and Araxi dropping elder spirits is going to be really nice when we need to make a lot of tier ninety ammunition later. Because right. that's tier ninety <laughs> arrows, which Araxi also drops the Araxite arrows. So like it's it, it's tiered properly. We've got elder god arrows. Mm. Yes, it's it's appropriately tiered, and as I imagine, we're going to be doing a number of Rax kills. And, on and one the of the things, I, oh, yeah. one of the things I'm most that looking forward to. With these changes, <laughs> is that you know I want to see what this does for the you know the price of wood in the game because yeah. i'm i'm a firm mm-hmm. believer that you should be able you know to just go and say you know hey you got you know a, a, a day at work where you're you know working on something and you can just run mobile in the background and you know just throw up you know say wood cutting for example at a certain yeah. type of tree i'm a firm believer that you should just be able to go to those trees and make a profit while wood cutting and not have that profit cut into you know by by yep. combat creatures dropping dropping logs Definitely. A billion magic it'll, logs. It'll, there are a lot it'll of bosses in that magic a, list. <laughs> exactly. And I was going to say, it'll take... I mean, this isn't going to be a, an overnight fix. It's going to take months because of the supply of, uh, right. you know, sort of yews and maples and magics that are already out there. But as they start to, you know, disappear from the economy, uh, you know, I think this will be a really good update. Yeah, and on that same note, they also did reduce the number of um, magic logs dropped by AOD. Uh, this week it previously was 750 uh, to 1250 and they dropped that down to 450 to 700 so about a 40 percent cut there yeah i was reminded that boss dropped seven loot piles so mm. uh you could potentially get quite a few magic logs 
Yeah, and, and so I mean reasonable, there's, reasonable change. And I mean, there's other offenders too when it uh, comes to it. it comes to you know who drops magic logs and whatnot as well. I, I mean, Croesus is on that list, and you can make an argument about whether it's, or not that's okay because that's a skilling boss. But also things like Rise of the Six are on there, as is uh, Virago as well. Uh, so, yeah. Um, given a lot of those group bosses not killed as often necessarily so yeah because like, I mean, like you look at all group bosses, aren't like they? you look at the other things on there that might be offenders um in terms of the big copious drops it's araxor croesus yep. rise of the six and previously aod and then they brought aod down and it, and it it kind of looks like it fits within the within the realm of possibility hellware has um 150 to 250 uh on its uncommon drop table, as is, as does Grigorovic and the other God yeah. Wars two things. So it's okay for them to drop some, I think. So we'll see how the how the economy of it goes, and we'll keep track of it. Yeah, uh, and that's all I have. You know, that's all there is to it. Uh, and then slightly adjacent to wood and 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 the spirits around that, they increase the quantity of Adam and Stone spirit drops from the giant mole. <laughs> Do we know how much that? Uh, got bumped by. I wonder how bad it was before. Is <laughs> really uh, the let me question. let me let me pull that up right now, because I mean that's yeah. something we're going to be heading to uh soon on that. Mm-hmm. Right now it's uh twenty or thirty, and previously if I pull up uh, I'll look at it. From previously it was like eight. Hmm? Previously it was, it was two like to four. Eight. No, yeah, it wasn't okay. many. <laughs> And I'll, I'll, so, I'll, I won't, I'll wait tell everyone, I, I died on normal mode uh, hard mode earlier in the week. Oh. <laughs> what do you do? I mean, you got a new character. It's fine. We, we've died to more embarrassing things. Yes. We're not going to talk about the, the Ice Warriors in the Asgardia dungeon. Oh. Like, we, don't, we don't need to talk about that. Or my uh, mugger on day one at the Edgeville Lodestone. Mugger? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> What do you do? Uh, the, the reclaim cost for things is 2k, whatever. I oh, know, it's beautiful. Nice. <laughs> uh, but speaking of the uh, group Iron Man stuff, uh, there's some other GIM patch notes here. Um, competitive group Iron Man players can now enable XP share when dungeoneering in uh, Damonheim. Yep, good. Nice. They updated the statue at the Iron Enclave with the first batch of World Firsts, as well as the Iron Man plaque in Edgeville now includes uh, Group Iron Man World First achievements. Cool. The competitive Group Iron Man players can now teleport to singles using the right click teleport option. So you don't need to do the we grouping still can't thing. Go, but we still can't we go still in. We still can't go in. We can't enter them. But we can click them once for the achievement and then leave. Which is just absurd. <laughs> should they have let I us? Mean, should they have let us do sinkholes somehow in our own I think no. group? No. Well, I thought sinkholes in that our would, own group would have been fine. I think so, but I'm guessing the amount of engine work involved is just not worth it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, the group Iron Man storage interface now displays the group name when on mobile. Group Iron Man okay. players should no longer see Iron Man armor pieces in the wardrobe. And finally, Reasonable. we were struggling with this. Unfired and ready skilling urns can now be stored inside group storage. That's Yay. a big one. You can hand somebody urns that just need to be fired if you want to feed somebody faster crafting XP. You can hand somebody urns that have runes already on them if you want to be a kind friend. There we yep. go. Yeah, I had a bunch of leftover divination urns because, uh, again, they only go up to level seventy on the on the strong ones that I was using. Mm. Once I hit level eighty, I thought I'll just chuck them in there and couldn't do it because you know, I know Shane was was in that level seventy and chasing it, and that seventy to eighty grind seems to be the longest of the lot. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> he was unable to do it. He hit it, but uh, I put him in there, and Tim was able to take advantage of it. So that was that was a really good update. I will hit 90 divination uh, yes. in an hour. And Fun unlock fact. your ports. <laughs> and unlock ports. Let's go. That's not going to get done tomorrow. We're going we're gonna to just have all those voyages sitting in there unfinished tomorrow because I'm going to dinner. <laughs> You've got a mobile phone? Right the... hmm? Yeah. Ports is, ports is made for mobile phone. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, but the thing is, the first tier of ports is like every 20 minutes, you need to check. I don't want to be on my phone every 20 minutes along with my friends. Like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Why? That's uh, that's why that's why we that's why mobile phones are invented so you don't have to talk to people. Just sit there. My yeah, I'm hanging out with you are... and just sit there. <laughs> my, hey, my 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 Thanksgiving plans are me and two friends. I don't oh, want to. Fair enough. It's not family. Well, you know, so yes. another married couple that doesn't we, have family uh, yeah. in the region. So that's that's fair enough. Then they're, they're people you want to be with, not people you have to be with, like your family. <laughs> yes, this is an absolutely voluntary. I'm very excited for it. So. <laughs> All right. But, well, for the main event we will, of the we will week, we'll give you that one. <laughs> main event of the week: combat, combat patch changes. notes. They adjusted the Blood Reaver with its wah, wah. Uh, healing frequency and its interaction with on-hit effects. And I want to read the dev note for this, then we'll get into it. Um, so it says we're looking at toning down the power of the Blood Reaver, having a strong heal tied with a low point cost, led to instances where players could just endure any and all damage coming at them with little danger and no real input. Additionally, Oops. Reaver had taken over as the dominant familiar when fishing for more DPS due to a bugged interaction with some player damage effects such as poison and god books. The Reaver will no longer apply these effects to increase the cost of choosing Reaver as a familiar over something like a Ripper Demon. Can so, I just yeah. yeah, go for it. They said uh, an... Uh, 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 a bug that was not there, but weren't they promoting the Reaver as the best thing because it worked with the poison and everything? <laughs> um. So, what what was happening with it before? I think I've explained this on the show. Is that the Reaver has a passive, and it still has it, where one third of your healing, your active healing, you have to be below zero, below max hit points. All the healing that actually applies to your health bars. Like if you're at full health and you eat a shark, it won't do anything. But if you do I something like Soul healing. Split or Vampirism, everything, it will apply. Yeah, everything that actually heals you, including Vamp, all the sources of Vamp, Soul Split, Vampirism, all those things, <clears throat> any heal you took a portion of that heal was dealt to your target as damage. And the mm. the bug, the thing that they are now calling a bug, was that, and this applied immediately, that was the previous iteration, um, was that the damage that was applied counted as your damage, not the familiar's damage. So you could hit the target like, every time you hit the target that would heal you with Soul Split or Vampirism or whatever it was, would then apply a hit splat to the target that counted as player hit splat, which, because it was a player hit splat, it had the chance, it wasn't typed as range damage, like it didn't have a chance to proc like by criminal bolts or arrow effects or anything, but it could proc poison, and it could activate god books. And so you had, you could effectively, if you were healing a soul split, you doubled the chances that you had to activate a a god book or a poison. Okay. Um, and if you were using other sorts of healing as well, like you could bump that up to very high levels. And with the recursive poison effect of the, um, what are the gloves? Why am I blanking? The Cinderbane gauntlets Cinderbane, yeah. um, that make your poison able to activate your poison as well. You could get some really massive like poison hits activating poison hits. Like you could get some effectively bef- on a creature that was poisonable prior to this update, you could bump your damage up by 15 to 20% by having a Blood Reaver out and you praying Soul Split. Mm. Um, they have changed this now. The actual change is that the damage that the familiar would have done, instead of being applied as player damage immediately, it is stored. And the next time the Blood Reaver attacks with an auto attack, the stored damage is expended as part of the familiar's damage. So it's no longer player damage, meaning it can't proc those effects. Although it does technically still have that passive that like a third of your healing. The problem is, we've talked about this before too, we as players deal in even the highest tier combat scenarios where we're taking a lot of damage, we deal 10 to 20 times the amount of damage we take. So the amount of damage we can heal, if only a third of that healing is being put towards something, we're getting like a 1% to 3% damage buff from this now in situations where we're taking a lot of damage. If you're taking less damage, it's even less than that. Versus mm. the 15 to 20% you were taking before. Um, so it's a very, very significant damage nerf where the Blood Reaver is effectively no longer a damage familiar. 
Um, yeah, and, and the know. buff is still something, but it's it's not there. And I will say that your numbers of uh, around twenty percent do you know kind of line up in terms of uh, what I felt in terms of you know just taking a, a quick run here before the show to hard mode Carapac, where it, that is a prime example for one of those bosses where you could get that interaction with the poison and the god books happening because Carapac is poisonable without that interaction happening. It definitely did cause the kill times. Uh, to go up by that amount uh, using the same Blood Reaver setup that that I was used to having uh, before on that. Yeah. So Now, my question for you, Shane, because I haven't really used the Blood Reaver as much for healing. Yeah. When were you were using it before, do you know if you could spam the special attack button or keybind <clears throat> to have it go off more than once every three seconds? Uh, see, that's not something I did because... What I would always okay. do is that when I would take it to a point where I was using it as a, as a healer, I would just set it to uh, an interval yeah. of three, four, five seconds, depending on what was needed. And the main use case uh, so, for that was Raziel. So I'd never gone the, below three before. So I don't know. The fastest auto, <clears throat> the auto fire rate, the rate that you set your familiar to use scrolls is based on their auto attacks. So you can say, I want you to use a scroll every one auto attack, every two auto attack, every three auto attacks as it is. Um, the Blood Reaver, if you set it to an auto attack rate of one, that means it attacks every one auto attack. It auto attacks every three seconds. So what the nerf, the, one of the patch notes here is that the Blood Reaver scrolls have a three second cooldown now, which means that you can't spam them click them. I'm assuming that prior to this update, if you like spammed the button, you could spam heal yourself every right. one oh, to three ticks. I assume that would be the interaction. Right, because I typically just um, use the auto fire feature for that. Got it. So yeah, if you set the auto fire feature to one, it will now fire off of cooldown is basically what they have it turned into. Yeah. Um, Whereas so basically, basically zero, one, two, and three are all the same. And then if you go for four, it's every four and five and so on and so yeah. forth from that. Okay. Um, and they changed the scroll cost before it was 10 points. Am I crazy? Or is it? What was the cost before? Do you? Remember? I feel like it. I feel I. I thought it was 15 oh, based on what I was seeing, but maybe it was 10, but now it's 15. So, um, I want to look at, let's just go back a couple patches in the wiki. Uh, cause it's an interesting, like, like it's an, yeah, it's 15. Yeah. So, so it said 15 before or is it 15 now? Oh no, no, hold on. I didn't go back far enough. That's on me. Uh, six. It cost six before. <laughs> oh, so wow. with a with a cloak with a cloak on that would either be four or five. Uh, I think five. So basically mm, you can only get now. four you can only get four activations until out of the yeah. full special bar. <laughs> well it, yes. So if you drink a potion, you can get more. You can write summoning potions exist, so you just use a spiritual prayer potion, it's the cheapest equivalent. Um which also keeps your prayer full, which is nice. Um, I need you to, to use a spiritual prayer potion. Uh, I was focused on testing or, the damage. I want to test this at Raziel now and well, see how that feels. So the passive you passively recover fifteen points every um you passively recover fifteen points every thirty seconds. That's the recovery rate. Um with the spirit cape on, this only costs twelve, so you get every two minutes you get five heals out of it, half your health bar if you're not drinking potions. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty significant nerf to that healing. <clears throat> uh, unless again, you are paying for more. Um, which is interesting. I think uh, we're not going to see many people uh, farming blood reavers anymore. Is what you're telling me? Uh, their cost should go down somewhat, mm -hmm. and I think that's also going to be helped by the other parts of this patch, right? So they didn't just change the Blood Reaver. They also um, changed the Unicorn and Bunny up so that all three of them, they no longer interrupt channeled abilities with their heals. Um, the Bunny up, I will tell you, is still bad. Uh, it's useful places that where raw shark are dropped as drops, so you can heal Low yourself with them if you need. So yes, Water Fiends and Dagonoths, congratulations, you've you, with a bun, yep, you're better now. Um, <laughs> moving on beyond that. The unicorn, though, I think is a very interesting shout. Um, that one's got a special move point of 20. 
It costs 20, but there's a difference. So the Blood Reaver heals you for 1,000, a flat 1,000 at the cost of 5% of its health. And if it hits zero health, it dies. Um, We've all experienced that before. <laughs> sure. Uh, we... Uh, it's also worth mentioning that like there are some prisms, some of the prism spells that do recover special attack points for your familiar soul, yeah. so that will also and, bump and, things and up. For what it's worth, a summoning point recovery uh, potion. The the I prism believe. the prism of restoration one that boosts the familiar's health. That's always a, a general part of my uh, combat setup. Anytime I'm using yes. something like a reaver or hellhound. Um. So. And double check me, but I'm pretty sure that also recovers uh, special points for your familiar as well. I think it does. Yeah. I think one does. special point every three ticks. So that's that's a significant. So that'll help a lot. Um, which is all to say that there are ways that you can just spam these scrolls if you need to. You just have to like be aware that the cost has changed. Um, what I think is more interesting, though, is the unicorn. Now, because this the next patch note, and we'll go into the details on this again in a second, but they reworked tank armor to give life point boost like the necromancy tank gear. Um, and there's a couple of standout pieces of armor within that that we'll talk about. But as it applies to this, the unicorn stallion, where the where the blood reaver heals a thousand health points and costs five percent of its life points, the unicorn stallion heals ten percent of your maximum life points. <laughs> which the maximum possible life points a player can have right now is slightly more than 20,000, which is excessive, right? Like that's unaugmented primal plus five with like some other nonsense going on. But the unicorn stallion heals that person more than twice as much as the blood reaver heals them. And it doesn't cost its own health to do so. So you're losing like 1% damage off of the healing passive, the like heals, heals turn into damage that the Blood Reaver has. But also the scrolls cost 200 GP each instead of, you know, <clears throat> 10,000. Um, the pouch is darn cheap. The um, And so, yes, it, it costs 33% more summoning points to use the heal. But if you're in any kind of tank armor or have like a bonfire boost and like if you have just like the basic boost, like my in power armor, I sit at like 12,000 health on my main. Um, like there's situations where the unicorn is just better healing and it doesn't have that three second cooldown. After the show, so after the, the show, I'm doing it. I'm doing an A-B test at Raziel comparing the old yeah. style Blood Reaver setup to a unicorn setup for the healing once again you will need to have some way to restore summoning points either a prison of salvation or spiritual prayer potions or what have oh, you oh yeah summoning summoning renewal that's it that's the potion um but uh yeah unicorn stallion in theory should be a large in in all cases for a person who is near maxed stats larger heal if you're in tank armor a significantly larger heal um, and also has the like fun side bonus that you can right click it and it will cure your poison. Um, but it doesn't really provide no any. Element. It doesn't provide any passive poison no. protection like a potion does. That negative. No, it's a just a. It's just a, a one off. Um. That said, uh, I don't think it does very much damage. I don't think the auto attacks on this thing. No, are I any. don't think you'd be bringing um, it for damage. And I mean, but as healing goes, it's. The Unicorn Stallion is likely to be a stronger healer, and if you want pure toughness, the Hellhound is still the king for reducing the damage you're taking. The Unicorn Stallion, I think, is potentially now better as a healer. And also, again, significantly cheaper. Uh, like, like a lot, a lot significantly cheaper. Um, actually... The Blood Reefer is a level 101. The Unicorn Stallion is 105. So the auto attacks on it are technically at base better before you factor in that healing bonus. Um, so it in might theory, be. in theory, it needs a test. Okay. I yeah. So now I, I so now I understand one. why when I messaged you about the Reaver, you were like, "Oh, you want the spoilers?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. Try the Unicorn. Uh, so that's where. 
I'm thinking this is going this week is the um, the unicorn should now heal you for more for more Again, than the, with for the more than the reaper does. Yeah. Okay. And since the reaper's not giving you a damage bonus anymore, um, if you're just bringing it for the healing, I feel like the unicorn is a cheaper and better alternative. Um, again, spiritual prayer potions are expensive, so maybe that's marginal, but, uh, we'll have to see how that falls out after blood reavers are, um, you know, not farmed or used as much anymore. Potentially. They might stay high because people just haven't realized they can swap. Um, but either way, (laughs) that's, uh, that's the change to familiars. We'll see how that shakes out. All right. Uh, let's let's talk about uh, tank armor then, because that one is something that we were anticipating uh, when we got yeah. here. Is that all the uh, tank armors in the game now have life point boosts that are similar to how the necromancy armor works? And let's just start off with something. Let's just start off with the basic candidates in the room of just talking about what this does for basic tank armors like Elder Rune and Ports armor, as an example. And I, I think it just makes them so much more comfortable for people to use who are looking to, you know, just soak damage and go cautiously, oh. let's say. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think this is, it's a, it's a big up for your basic tank armors. Um, like, I mean, I'm wearing rune right now on my group Iron Man and I have, you know, eight, eight or 9,000 health with, 52 constitution and that feels wrong uh very nice though uh especially if i'm doing fast trips like i I was doing the abyss last night for a couple hours just to get my melee stats up to 50s um and i would just bring like four fish because i was banking all the abyssal charms so i was like fast bank trips and i was using my health bar as most of my expendable health um because i just had a bigger health bar to use every trip <laughs> was a few less fish I had to bring. Uh, really nice. Really, really nice. Yeah, that's good. Um, um, and, you know, they say they'll be monitoring how certain gear performs, such as Crypt mm-hmm. Bloom, and may tear down their HP bonuses if deemed necessary. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's where we go next with Crypt Bloom, because <laughs> it, let's just... That's my yeah. magic armor. <laughs> Leave it alone. See, give me, anytime we give talk me God about mode with it. <laughs> the fact that Crypt Bloom is too good, people justifiably were like, but that's how I get to play the game. And you know what? You're valid for that. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. You're valid for that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's too strong in the hands of the end game people. And I really hope that there is some elegant solution someone thinks up to nerf it in such a way that it's not overpowered in the hands of the end, like the, like, Ridiculous what's, humans, what, but it's still... What's the amount of kills that they do, or the ones who are farming it, and just nerf it for them, but for people like me, just leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, like, it is such a great accessibility option for folks that don't care to engage with the endgame combat system. It is a, it is an excellent tool for that, and uh, it's got better now, so there you go. We'll see how that goes. It's got a 4,500 total boost. I might be able, I might be able to do Sanctum now. Yeah, I mean, it's tier 90 set. tank armor. It's so. got the tier 90 tank armor boost. Uh, <laughs> it used to have less health than the Mazkab Raids armor, um, which was tiered at, uh, at least the like the dropped versions, the active versions were tiered at tier 92 health bonus and are now tiered at tier 90. So they lost that like last statistical advantage. Now it's just based on the passives. Yeah, so that's what I was going to um, say. You you bring Acto if you're looking to to just do the set effect, basically, at this point, mm-hmm. compared to the, the other but ones that are out there. One more set of armors that were that had a health bonus before, and maybe they uh, shouldn't have. Virtus. By golly, they still kept Virtus, it. Pernix, Torva. Yeah, the next armors. They uh, previously had what the, was the equivalent of a tier 80 health bonus. Um, that has been in the new like armor scaling that's been scaled down to tier 75 to match the armor bonus they've always had um, because power armor has five tiers lower. So tier 80 power armor has tier 75 armor stat. Um, they have tier 75 armor and health stat now uh, while retaining their tier 80 damage bonus stat, which is all to say that you just get a free set of tier 75 tank armor that is augmentable and also has a power bonus on it. 
Um, next armor continues to reign supreme, and the boss is fun. So strong work, keep it up. So I mean, at that point, it really is the comfortable, you know, generalist PVM armor that people should probably yeah. target if um, unless they're going and they know they need you know the special effects of the tier 90 like in the dracolic or the ceramic or um or, it doesn't degrade to dust one. it so, doesn't cost an arm and a leg to upkeep yeah it's the choice for like i on the main use those armors for slayer i on the iron man i will be grinding to get those armors because they are accessible they're used in the creation of masterwork gear like that armor is valuable and good and uh that's that's it's a little unfortunate that it now so heavily outstrips the arm like it was funny when it had like a thousand extra health bonus on it yeah versus versus like the armors from god wars 2 but the god wars 2 armors are now just actively worse than everything dropped by nex except for the Suske armor which is hybrid and still weird um but the like yeah this the other three the Saren, zimarak and zaros armors from god wars 2 yeah they're bad now yeah <laughs> they're, um, they're not the choice so so in general i mean it, it it'll be it'll be interesting to see where uh the the price goes on this see if it goes up and you know yeah. gives people a reason to go back to next and i think you still have you know make a case for serenic draculic tectonic and what have you um if you're looking you know to min max at that at that point and you know get the ultimate in terms yes. of the tier 92 armor and whatnot if you're doing high-end PVM or you're doing stuff or you've just got a lot of money to blow around, like, they're still better. Um, but the degrade to dust and the cost of repair patches, uh, they're... Yeah. Bertestorff and Pernix just got an extra thing added to their list of accolades in addition to everything else, so... <laughs> Again, boss is fun. I'm not mad about it. But... Mm. No, and I, and, and I think that... Um... People are going to have their eyes on Crypt Bloom, right? In terms of what that's right. going to mean for people and how people are going to interact with that in the game world. I think that's what people are going to see as the shiny object. But yeah. when it comes down to it, I think the one that Jagex has to watch is these next armors instead because it, they, they have that power armor boost to it. Yeah. Well, speaking of bosses that are very poorly designed, uh, it's interesting that now it's much easier to get yourself above the 30,000 health point line. Um, previously, like in order to survive the Calphite King Green, unless they've changed this mechanic, if you can get your hit points above 30,000 with a power burst of vitality, um, you could solo the green and just ignore it, and it would hit you for 30k, and then you would just heal. Um the mechanic that is supposed to be the you can't solo this boss because this exists because it hits you for 30k. Um, yeah, Calphite King has, your base hit points, has its own. Much easier to get your base hit points above 15k now for that. Um, just from a group Iron Man perspective, that makes solo KK sketchy, but more reasonable. And you know what the funny thing about all this is? Is that I was thinking of selling my Virtus armor on my main. How oh dare. But I guess not now. <laughs> Not anymore! I think, I mean, if nothing else, you'll want it to eventually turn into whatever the Masterwork equivalent is, right? Like, that's, Yeah, because, because my idea was that it's coming. My idea with it is that I was going to dabble in magic once uh, once I had all my necromancy <laughs> stuff sorted out, but then Group Iron Man sure. came, and I just really haven't had, a, had the time to go into, into magic on the main. But um, continuing on with the other uh, patch notes this week, combat-wise, Altar of War now resets uh, the power burst of vitality potions which is wonderful because there's lots of pvm encounters where those are used that should have been added a long time ago um and this is a part of the ability cooldown reset unlock from war's retreat and they also fixed a number of edge cases where dive and bladed dive abilities were not displaying their correct target options so working around the margins again on that and the changes that uh, followed from saying i think we've all at least people who are ridiculous and use movement abilities to get around the game like i am very familiar with cases where i aim to dive to a tile that is definitely within my dive range and definitely unobstructed and the game is just like oh you wanted to go here instead okay yeah, yeah. um yeah and it, i think that's what they fixed there I'm and, and the worst case is when you do that and you wind up dead in certain places so like not even bossing just like 
getting to and from summoning obelisks and all kinds of random crap. It was just like uh, things were not easily repeatable. So, all right. Uh, and then uh, general patch notes. Uh, following feedback, uh, the scruffy note found um, within uh, the Scavarite cave has now been added to the Master Quest cape from a few weeks back, which is interesting. It's a stealth little quick Master Quest cape requirement there. It belongs. It's a lore bit. It belongs on there, and you just it go does. pick it up, right? So I'm not mad about it. Yeah. Um, move the dedicated Slayer aura, all five tiers of it, from being a combat aura to now being a skilling aura, as it was in pre-2019. And they say it, it felt um, that it being a combat aura isn't the best place for it to be because all the other combat auras have some effect on combat itself, whereas the Slayer aura gives a chance at not reducing your Slayer count, which leads to a longer task, which therefore results in more Slayer XP. As this does not affect it's your combat cool. prowess, it's more a skilling aura. I hate this. I hate this aura. It needs a rework. This is entirely a side note. The aura is the most bait nonsense on the planet. You use any single damage aura, you're going to get more than 5% more XP. Uh, this aura only saves you time on running to a Slayer Master, which we have teleports to enough of them at this point, that uh, you actively just cost yourself Slayer XP by using this aura. Uh, like, maybe if you wanted to extend a really good task or something... That would be a case for it, but like shy of that, the aura is actively just troll to use. Uh, I I despise. I it. honestly had uh, no idea it existed before today. It, As a player, I've never ever used it. There's like four auras that are just garbage. Um, currently, one that one, poison purge, <laughs> flame proof. There's like four or five of them that like by the time. You, Anybody who isn't a group Iron Man, like by the time a normal player gets enough loyalty points to earn them, the aura would have, would be useless and uh, or you, next to useless. What do you typically run aura wise per non a Slayer task? Uh depending what Slayer task. Uh, if it's a higher level one, uh, either vampirism or um, penance. Yep. Uh, <laughs> they're pretty much the only two I really use. Because just about everything is AFK. Uh, Majorat or dark magic are good options if you or like for, for necromancy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But again, I mean, you kill things so fast uh, with with most. You know, when you're out. sort of higher Knock level, another one that needs you, a rework. You don't. Yeah, you don't really need. <laughs> you don't really need uh, anything other than those two for Slayer. Okay. Uh, Calgarian Notes Part 4 can now be dropped on floors 46 and 47 of Damonheim. Yep. I wanted to, Shane to include this one. I think it's really funny because as far as I'm aware, that it's just a 13-year-old bug or 14-year-old bug that just got fixed. So whoever noticed and was like, yeah, I guess we should throw this in here. Strong work. That's funny. <laughs> They also dropped the Slayer XP on Osseus, went on a relevant task to be more in line with the other Rex Matriarchs, and for folks wondering, this brings it down. Mm. Uh, Premier membership tokens can now be added to the currency pouch. Finally. <laughs> After all cool. these years. And just for anyone who does, uh, yeah, who enjoys their thieving, the cheeky monkey has been put onto that uh, <gasps> with, with the Premier Clubs. So if you missed out on the cheeky monkey uh, when it was on, uh, I know Thieves was consistently talking now. about how people who missed out on that are having a sub event yep. experience. That's it. Well, now you can get it with Premier Club tokens. So I I put Premier Club on this account. I bought the uh, the legendary pet and the cheeky monkey with uh, two of my three <laughs> tokens. <laughs> so there you go. And the Holy Knight I Sword. Think the, the Go ahead. Oh, I think the, I was going to say, I think the meta third option is probably the Flaming Skull because it's an override that acts as a light source. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good I one. It's only a tier two light source, which means you want a tier three one anyways, and there's better headgear. It's, you know, it's one of those like, oh, shoot, I forgot a light source and need one kind of things, but. Yeah. Yeah, it was, again, I take my um, legendary, I've got the um, 
the law pet, so I just call that and take a lantern out of there. <laughs> oh, true. I was thinking like the um, the headgear from Kandarin acts, acts as a tier three light source as well. Okay. If you just need something to wear for like mining gold rune. But anyways. Mm. And finally, the Holy Knight Sword and offhand have been added to the premier token store in the weapons tab. So. Yay, seasonal. Yeah. Seasonal perfect, green and red nonsense. Perfect in time for the Christmas event next week. All next right. Week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> next week, Christmas yep. event is here. Have to, I'll have to log back onto the uh, Panasius account. <laughs> It's Anyways, a uh, big thank you now to some Patreon supporters this week is Alvaro Al, Amos Reed, Andrew C, Arvidzel, Bladecom, Brain K, Chilbura, Dominic Carr, Drama Free, Duramax, Guy Lafleur, Hare, Iscontu, Jade Gizmo, Jason S, Jesse W, Keski, Lemon Lodge, Luminos, Mongrath, Mr. T, Parnassius, Ricky A, Ripeth, Robbie D, Runestar, Samuel FL, Scott DS, Shirt Pants, Tabby, Targayeen, The Naked Captain, The Dabbing Goat, Tim, Ukulele Steve, Woody, Zant, and Zazacon. Big huge thank you to all these people. It means the world to us. We just finished up our mega monthly bit poll for ending the year uh, in terms of the monthly bit content. We're going to be doing... Um, the discussion of RuneScape's gods through the Sixth Age on that uh, moral alignment chart and talk about their philosophies, which, you know, we we were talking about this this bit for a long time and we realized that, you know, it doesn't make sense and this is probably why it's losing, was not necessarily the, you know, just the act of, you know, putting them on that chart because everybody knows where they go. So we made it more about uh, the philosophies and the arcs of, of where they've been. So we'll be doing that one and we'll be doing one of, uh, to be decided right now, temporary game modes or why, or rather what makes PVM fun. So uh, that's what the next two monthly bits are going to be. And if you want to gain access to these, patreon.com slash RSBNB. Sign up for as little as a dollar a month. You get access to that entire back catalog of monthly bits. And with that, you also, of course, get the ability to vote on those monthly bits, attend the roundtables when we do them. And, of course, you get the mention in the show notes. For $3 a month, our VIP tier, you'll get uh, Discord uh, chat channel I mentioned on the podcast at the start of the month, and as well as a special rank color on Discord as well. And for five dollars a month, you'll receive a shout out on the podcast each and every week, and the access we use to make the clip show. And potentially, if uh, if things go go okay in the next week and a bit here in relation to the Canada Post drag, we will be doing an RSBNB update Christmas card. But time is running out on that, so I'll be watching that over the next week and we'll see if we're able to get that get that fulfilled before Christmas. And if not, we might uh, look into doing something else for that. But if any of this sounds interesting to you or you just want to support your favorite podcast, patreon.com slash RSBNB. It means the world to us. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, thank guys. You, thank you. All right, so what have we been doing? Do we want to start with our discussion points or do we want to start with some stories of the week? Any thoughts? I'll go to the discussion points first. Okay. Yeah, let's get her done. Yeah, so what have um, we got on ranged weapons? We were having this conversation over the last couple of days as a few of us are kind of getting to the point in range training. I see, uh, I think Shane, I saw you get level four, so you're not part of this. No. But for, <laughs> <laughs> for that, <laughs> um, where like the first 50 range levels, you have access to like relatively consistent weapons, kind of. It's weird because fletching, you need really high fletching levels to like fletch a magic shortbow, which is a tier 50 weapon. Um, or mag or rune arrows, which you use with that weapon, like it all tears there and then falls off really hard. Um, it's like fletching is in a really weird place. And again, plans by Breezy and Stu to fix this at some point. But we were realizing, like, what the heck are we going to do, like, about these things? And it it seems like the best and only reasonable range option, if you were, unless you have really high fletching for some reason, is um, at level fifty, is to like just make rune knives with smithing. So, like, smithing is the skill you train to make your range ammunition right now. Hmm. Um, so, that's a little weird just to start off with. But the big thing is range has a lot of good weapon access at in the 70s and higher. 
where it's you've got access to things like the crystal bow at, at level 70 you've got ac- that like doesn't even need ammo um, or the hand cannon at 75 once you get through the quests for it that like you have to grind for the dragon pickaxes anyways or at 80 you've got like um the crossbow what's the um the queen black dragon royal crossbow, crossbow. the royal thank you um and it's like we have these a set of and then you know into like god wars two weapons basically um it's like the weapon progression is pretty solid later on but there's this really weird gap at 60 where like again you need like fletching in the 90s high 90s to make dragon darts or um fletch the like ammunition or an elder bow and like it's it's really kind of an odd gap where like all of the the dragon um uh, javelins not throwing knives and thrown axes are all locked behind quests with like tier 80 plus requirements where like it's really odd like the crossbows the dragon hunter crossbows that are the the tier 60 weapon are locked behind demon bosses there's just really not a lot of weapons available for range at the tier 60 thing and it seems like the most accessible option assuming you have the hunter level to get one is actually a a, a red cell i think it's 59 hunter gives you access to the salamander and terramintar which is just which is <laughs> just the what? best option for ranger ah so that's why you told me my terramin <laughs> yes cuz we Pern and I were talking uh, about this like uh, two days before this conversation we were like yeah what do we do with terramin we've got to use for like everything else what do we need terramin for like well you could make grand magic potions or grand strength potions out of it eventually or some kind of incense stick no the incense stick we looked it up it was it's, some random like it yeah, it, yeah. It wasn't was useless. particularly useful. Oh, yeah. it's the twenty. Yeah, the Terramin incense. Twenty five percent chance to automatically bank caches when yeah. burning logs. Which we have a book at the tier one of the um of the um book the um, yeah. underworld grimoire does that automatically for you. So you're like, I I mean, yeah, useless. Uh, so yeah, apparently that's the use of Terramin uh, is ranged ammunition herbs. Um, so again, I'm really glad they're fixing that. But that was an interesting. Like, what the heck do we do with this? Do we just use rune knives until we get to level seventy? No, like, no. I mean, why not? Uh, you I could. mean, you could, but or you do like, you do gravite equipment at fifty five because again, I mean, dungeoneering tokens you just get from the uh, from the elite dungeons. Maybe <clears throat> I, I was lucky yeah. because I you know I, I I did the hundred black dragon kills. I got nine hundred rune arrows. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I bought a, I bought a magic bow from Champions Guild Champions and Guild, yeah. just use that. Uh, but yeah, the, I mean, it's stupid that you cannot fletch <laughs> a weapon. At the level you need, you know, you, you, yes. it's twenty levels above to use the weapon that you're. I mean, that's it. Just so, makes uh, no sense at all. And so hopefully, they're that's something that. they're fixing. Yeah, which is great. Um, so that was a big, a big kind of discussion for the week. Was was that? Um, it's, yeah, it's all I had for no. That's weapon, that's fine, like. and you know I'm I'm looking at this other at this other table, and then you have things, you know, <laughs> like the dark bow, but that's in level ninety Slayer requirement, which isn't happening anytime uh-huh. soon. Then no. at seventy five, you have the Armadillo crossbow again. That's probably not happening. Well, it could no, happen. It's God Wars one could very reasonably. Soon. Cri- it, it it will be crystal bow into maybe hand cannon into um because again. Like Iron Man wise, we will need to level up a number of hand cannons to get uh, explosive components to make perks later um, to make our crackling perks. So it's we'll something that is going to be needed. To yeah, yeah. So, so what what's the call then for? Is is it the hand cannon then to to level up and uh, disassemble for invention well, and ranged XP there? Or? Probably. Um, I mean, they do take a little bit to get. They're not all that rare, but we do need, like I said, we do need a good number of them, and we'll need to hang out in the Chaos Dwarf battlefield for dragon pickaxes if we want them anyways. Um, so that's, I mean, if we want something to disassemble, what about it's almost hand cannons. I mean, they're not disassemblable. Um, I mean, just for range in general. Oh, they're, they're tier, tier 50. 55. 
Yeah. Um, so reasonable. That's the other option. Again, Hunter. <laughs> Hunter is giving us 63 Hunter, I think, for that. Giving which, us, which I'm um, very the- close to, and I do need to get us some red ones for the farm anyways at some point. So The issue with chins, as with obsidian rings, which would be the other option potentially, is that they... Um, they break every time you throw them. There's no <laughs> chance for them to be reclaimed. Doesn't mean they break on every ability, thank God. But it does mean that you go through them at a reasonably good clip. So you have to collect quite a few for them to be a reasonable training method. Right. Um, and then we can't They even... are reasonable for like bossing for quests or something if you need to just have a burst of, I need to have an appropriately leveled weapon. Yeah. But... And, and mechanized no, chins are the 75 so yep also neither of those have an offhand <laughs> so you are main hand damage only so you are 66 percent damage capacity and, and see this that. is the thing this is, this is this is why <laughs> this is why when i was looking at this and i was looking at you know magic in the terms of starting this out i was thinking you know necromancy i think for most things is going to be the play combat wise in this group iron man uh scenario unless you you know want to go yeah. um and when we get high enough levels, we will boost each other through ED3 to get the rest of it. Meow, yeah. TBD. Yeah. Probably. So, um, but, you know, that just goes in to show why uh, Breezy and Stu's Game Jam project uh, can't come soon enough. So. Right. That, that, that's important. Uh, um, yep. We also uh, had on the list this week uh, the idea of going over uh what we've learned on defined locations which the two of you actually just tested uh before before we began the podcast here and what'd you find iron men cannot use other people's divine locations but we can you group iron men can use each other's so yeah for and i were able to both make a divine herb patch one and both collect some well, you know, spirit weed and renars and toad flax and stuff from it. And and I mean, for um, the for just you know having those around for daily herb lore stuff, if they're not being yep. farmed, that's just a good thing to uh, to have. And that you know, if people are mm-hmm. on in the chat, just say, "Hey, we're doing divine locations right now. If you're able, come, come, and away you go." Right? So, yeah. yep. you don't, don't get you know, normally when you do it on a main account. The person who put down the location would get a number of noted versions from the people who were like having all the people collecting from yours gives you noted stuff um but that does not happen for a group moment, which again fair fine reasonable but the fact we can use each other's is very nice so there you go what other divine locations do you think that uh are, are gonna hunter. be good aside from that hunter hunter okay. hunter box traps um hunter like the the kebit hole burrows are pretty decent uh, in terms of secondaries and summoning ingredients, um, all of the herb patches are are pretty solid. Um, and the earlier love tier ones don't use very much of your divine location area things. You can go through multiple. Um, and if you're if for some godforsaken reason you need a divination experience, the divination ones are okay after Fate of the Gods. But I don't <laughs> think that's going to be an Iron Man problem. No, because I I no. think I think th- three of five of us at least already have eighty divination. So, yep. <laughs> indeed, uh, don't anticipate that being an issue. Actually, and the um, other thing with uh, with divine locations, Snapdragon uh, Snapdragons are very hard to come by if you don't grow them. We discovered uh, that as we, too. we discovered yesterday. Uh, luckily, I had done some of uh, thank, thank Shane's fave Shane's favorite uh, mini game temple trekking. Uh, so I was able to get some from there. So your your divine locations would be good if you sort of you saved me having to go spend well. a quarter hour at yeah. <laughs> Agility Arena for a singular Snapdragon. So <laughs> thanks for that. No, <laughs> they really what, need hey, to do something do with that Agility Arena. They really got to do something. I, with that that was actually arena. my favorite Agility Arena. I like but... it. I liked it's it idea. because it was just the different. You know, it's really actually far. really good on old no. school. Yeah. It's yeah, a they've, fun... they've added a lot of buffs to it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, yeah, there's just not enough XP and, and things like that for it. It's, you know, it, it's sort of, yeah. yeah, running circles in agility is just so, it gets so boring. At least that one, oh, I've got to run here. I've got to tag that. Mm-hmm. I've got to, you know, it sort of gave you something to do. So I Well, and I it's really good it. money on RS3 because nobody wants to do it. The the pirate hook that it, that it gives at least used to be yes. incredibly good GP per hour to farm. But yeah. So Anyways. I think our big thing on this is that 
there was always some question about divination, I think, in particular the mm. fact that you went to one colony and then you moved on from it and you trained up with it. But we're what we're finding across the group Iron Man thing is that divination not only as an invention unlock, but just in terms of a utility skill to help us out throughout yeah. the game is actually quite good. Yeah, I was surprised how good it was. Yeah, mm. and training it is so chill. Like it's it's one of like they've done a lot to improve the gathering skills with addition to like the ore box and the wood box and all those things. And just like gathering for divination is just chill and lovely. Also, it wasn't like, in the I, patch notes, but they fixed the diagonal uh, aspect of it this week. That was last week. They fixed that last week. That oh, was in the patch well, notes. maybe I forgot to read that out then. Oops. <laughs> They did. They 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 did fix that. That is that is functional. <laughs> uh, maybe yeah, that, that was, was this week. No, was, it was in the. I saw a patch note about that that they fixed that. Somewhere. I thought it was this week. Yeah, that? I thought it was this week that they fixed that. Because it was still doing it to me last week, and uh, yes. then I noticed. Yeah, it's the very yeah. last patch note this week under general. Fix an mm. issue that blocked players from interacting with divination wisps diagonally. Oops, I should have put that in there in the list. There we yeah. go. It's on the list now. Uh, so there you go. So that's, uh, thank God, that's a lovely fix. <laughs> no, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, glad that's back. Um, and actually, you didn't used to be able to grab them or like harm, far, ugh, harvest from them diagonally. You, it would walk your character into a cardinal direction of them. Now you actually can just harvest from them diagonally, including like around the corner of the wisp, the like central crater. Like, yeah, no, really nice. Really, It's an improvement. Thank you. Thumbs yep. up. Um, <clears throat> yeah. In any case, uh, the both of you also wanted to talk about um, porters and in terms. Yes. So, so what is this discussion about? Is this in particular about the um, amount of crafting needed it's... for eighty or? No. So this no, is I... like I wanted to figure out. That I sat down in the last couple of days and really wanted to figure out what is worth portering. Like on an Iron Man where you have to make your own porters, you can't just buy the materials and craft them up real quick. Um, on an Iron Man where you're making them yourself, what what's worth it? What is an actual time save to porter versus just running to the bank? Because making them is a pretty significant investment of time, right? You're mining gems, you're mining gold, you're smelting gold you're cutting gems you're creating necklaces you're gathering energy and you're creating the borders it's a seven step process um and like i i got my 80 divination and 80 craft or 80 um smithing in advance so like going into my grind for it um and then i said you know what i'm gonna just make necklaces to get 80 crafting it's not the most efficient thing but i'm i'm like going to do this so i'm like have done enough of it at this point to say that like confidently speaking porter wise you can make in an hour with like i'm making about 3500 porter charges in an hour right now i think with all of the divination upgrades in terms of like the muspa and the outfit and um, all of the buffs to energy gathering, um, you could probably make up to like 4,000, 4,500 if you're really like lean in gaming, if you're like four tick mining and stuff. You make about 4,500 porter charges in an hour if you're making them in bulk. Um, so that's kind of what I like started doing this math based off the idea of is like, okay, so if I can do that, if one, if like 4,000 porter charges is worth an hour, right? Just like as a number, what, how far does something have to be from a bank for it to be worth using porters for? Um, and kind of what it seems to come down to is how many of those porter charges would you use to like save that time? So like, if you're just harvesting something like, um, you know, uh, say you're harvesting snape grass, because this is one of the things that is a, a good example for you. Like you're on Waterbirth Island and you're picking up snape grass. Um, an inventory of it is, is 28 inventory slots. <clears throat> so 28 porter charges, how long would that take me to, to make? And how long would it take to run that snake grass to the bank? Is it faster for me to make porters or is it faster for me to run that to the bank? Well, I think we know the answer and, to that on Waterbirth <laughs> Island. Right. That's a very easy one. The, the way that that comes out is effectively, if you're just having your inventory, there's no wood box, ore box, gem bag, 
Um, you're not, you're just having <clears throat> one inventory worth of things like 25, 26 to 28 things. If it takes you more than 24 seconds to get to the bank and come back, it's worth using quarters. Um, which is a great for something like, like fishing, which again, there's not a lot of fish that far from a bank, but if you're in the living rock cavern and you're for some reason like fishing cave fish or rock tails, it, it's maybe worth just not going to the deposit box and actually staying at the fishing spots. Especially um, when you consider our, that you're going to have to reset aggro and all that too in there. Uh, if you have the gemstone golem outfit on, you don't, or the shark outfit, they both prevent aggro in okay. there. Okay, okay. Um, and I will tell you, <laughs> spoilers, uh, I have already, f- I finished like two days ago, I have all 54,000 fragments of my gemstone golem outfit, so as soon as I hit 20 divination, or 20 invention, I will just have that baby. <laughs> so, they don't take that long to get. Yeah, that's good. Apparently. Um, but, um, what this means is for things like the ore box where you're getting 150 things, you have to balance, is it faster for me to bank or faster for me to make 150 porter charges? <laughs> and that question becomes, is the bank within like a minute and a half of me? Which is pretty much nowhere. Um, so for general mining without stone spirits or things, it's actually generally just better to go to the bank with the ore box because the ore box is just better. Like it's you're just gonna lose yourself time if you try to do porters. Oddly, you'll get some more crafting experience making the porters, but you'll lose time. Yeah, and and that kind of I think um, leans into the general design sense with divination. Um, when it was coming out, that it was, or when it came out, that it was more you know that like we mentioned that kind of utility skill, and it's nice now that the changes with mining and smithing and and wood cutting yes. have, have made it so that you can yeah. rely on the boxes for that. The wood box holds up to like 200 logs. You've got a fully upgraded wood box. (laughs) The bank has to be like more than three minutes from you to be worth bordering. And I mean, with that, you're going to assume that you're not (laughs) using lodestones, you're low on run energy, and you don't have teleports. So I just don't think there's a, I don't believe there's a, there's a log. I don't think there's a log where that's the case. Because the other thing is, again, if you have 80 divination, which I'm assuming you do if you're crafting these porters, you can create an item called a uh, superior locator, which for the cost of four divination energy, not like 90 to make one porter, four, you can go to any log. You can pick a log and go to a tree for it. Um, It'll just teleport. You know, I forgot about that item until you guys were discussing that last night. Um, Pern, did you wind Um, up making one or...? No, not yet. I will. It's like fifty uh, energy but, and a divine adamant yeah. rock to make one. Like there, yeah. it, the cost you can just make it whenever you whenever you need it, basically. Yeah. But it's again, there, I don't think there's a world <laughs> where you would ever use this for that because, and the same thing with mining gems. <clears throat> All the gem rocks are pretty close to a bank, and the gem bag, even the basic gem bag that only costs two thousand engineering tokens, like nothing. Yep, you could have it at level twenty engineering without just doing Demonheim. Um, mm. that thing. Like that holds enough gems that 120 porter charges per inventory. The rocks in either Alcarid or um, Shiloh Village are closer. For the record, um, for every for for the same amount of time uh, mining 10 gems at Shiloh or mining about 17 gems at Alcarid, given again assuming you're uh, above 80 mining, so your critical chance doesn't matter on the Alcarid rocks and yada yada, you make about 170 porter charges from the Alcarid gem rocks as you make uh, about 235 charges from the Shiloh Village rocks. So Shiloh Village, if you're making porters, you should mine the Shiloh Village gems. Um, <clears throat> and that's the ones I used when I was doing my math for like porters per hour. Um, so, anyways, so, so I, I mean, if we're going to... Shil- Shiloh Village gives a lot more diamonds. Oh, well, it gives diamonds and no yes, sapphires, yes. where the, uh, it's, the other one, no diamonds and tons of sapphires. The other one gives half half your things are sapphires, which are useless for porters. Yeah. So I guess the question from this then is, you know, what are the what are the things that, you know, just immediately stand out that, you know, right. a, a mid-game iron um, person should porter? So, again, uh, the, the categories of things you can porter... <laughs> The mining, it's worth noting that anything that you're using stone spirits on, a a single porter charge transports two ores. So 
if you didn't have the porter, you're you're only getting 60 gathers before you bank if you're using like stone spirits. And even more in like serious cases, concentrated gold, you get five ores per mine. Um, and you only use one porter charge for that too. So for like concentrated gold, concentrated coal, even with the ore box, you effectively have an inventory of 25. So it's almost never worth it to bank there aggro mm. notwithstanding like it's just not so for mining concentrated coal or concentrated coal concentrated gold and granite interestingly if you need a bunch of wow. granite for something sandstone wow. you can mine in minifos next to a bank it's those three that's it for mining uh is what's worth it everything else there's a bank nearby um yep. <clears throat> archaeology if you are more than 20 tiles or 12 seconds from the nearest material drop-off point so, like, if it takes you 12 seconds from there, if you're more than 20 tiles away, um, it's worth it to Porter. So, like, there's a lot of places where that's worth it. The efficiency on that goes down significantly if you're using the soil auto screener because the soil box, like the ore box, that makes, makes your Porter. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so, like, the auto screener is only worth using at like one location underground in Everlight and like two locations in Skyguard Citadel. And I also <laughs> want to, I also just want to remind people of this too when it comes to using the auto screener since we're on archaeology right now. In that, um, let's say you're, you know, gathering in Karadet. If you're at a specific dig, dig spot and it only gives the third age metal and the, and the white oak or whatever it is, your auto screener will only return back those materials it won't return everything else that the right. that the carrot nice. that soil does so just keep that in mind if you're going for a specific set of uh, materials in it that the auto screener might make sense there it makes sense for like binding contract materials in particular for example yes. yeah yeah um so okay so that's mining that's archaeology for fishing it's just cavefish rock tails the rest of the fish are close to a deposit box um for at least as far as I'm aware anyways. For Hunter, um, Black Salamanders are the only use case I can think of where you wouldn't want to bank them otherwise. Um, black Salamanders you would use as a decon material to get certain invention parts for making, I think it's augmenters, it might be siphons. But either way. Those used to be um, deep wilderness, but now it's safe. Now it's safe. So you would take porters with you to Black Salamanders potentially. Um, and that covers like the general gathering skills. Farming, don't, don't, don't no, grab anything. Don't, farming, don't do that. Like, don't do that. For the snake grass and water, water birth it's always going to be closer to go to a, to a leprechaun. Um, well, which the last so category people, of porter thing is, is the like, et cetera one. Um, what was that? That's the interesting. I was just going to say, ahead. really, I mean, if, if you're, if you're going to snake grass, I mean, you're working up your, uh, your, um, slayer anyway i mean you get so much from aberrant specters i think uh banshees drop them as well there is there's one location on Waterbirth island where you can pick up eight snape grass uh with like a 20 second respawn time and you can just hop between three worlds um you can you can farm thousands of it per hour um like if you need snape grass you you go to Waterbirth island um so yeah there's that because um, we're not getting enough seed grass seeds to fill out what we need probably mm-hmm. um, from the like et cetera category there's a few uh, potions and summoning secondaries that I would say are worth it that's muspa spines phoenix feathers and red spider's eggs um, are worth portering um, if you again if you need to collect them don't bring them to a bank yourself just porters so contrary to gold contrary to gold coal Granite, um, archaeology far from banks and deposit points, cavefish, rock tails, black salamanders, maybe dragon hides, although I don't know if that's efficient crafting XP, and I don't think that's what you want to do for crafting I mean, anyways, if we, but you, you could. <laughs> like, if we get to a point where we're able to make our own magic note paper, then I would say probably not on the dragon hides. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Although, that costs logs, so I mean, anyways... Um, but muspa spines, phoenix feathers, red spiders, eggs, and snape grass on Water Earth Island. Those are the list of things that I would porter. I don't think there's anything else porter is going to apply to that is uh, worth using on an Iron Man, which is blue blue dragon a scales? crazy. Maybe again, potion and secondaries. I kind of skimmed yeah. the potion, the like etc. List. Um, yeah, blue no, dragon scales enough. are a definite. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I would say oh, the both of you need to listen. Need to listen to last week's show when we had Highcliff on and his uh, um, start to Twitch streaming <laughs> was that he yeah. would Twitch stream uh, 
himself gathering uh, Cave Nightshade and portering it. Hmm. Ooh, Cave Nightshade is another one. Yep, for weapon yep. poison. Yep. Again, Herblore and Potion Secondaries, there's a lot of them that I'm probably probably didn't like think through properly. Um, but that's the... Um, there's porter math for you. Yeah, and it makes there sense because we want to be we want to be you know uh, kind of thoughtful with where we use these, and you know just we we don't want to use them willy nilly at least at the start on it. Whereas you know on the main you can just go here, GE, give me you know two hundred two hundred <laughs> dragon stones and the well, and the top <laughs> energy and away we go kind of thing. Again, right now gathering energy is. <laughs> A ridiculous amount of time for these. Um, interestingly, per charge, it's actually faster to gather the materials for ruby porters than for emerald ones. Um, it's, it uses, I think, 60 energy instead of 45, but you get more energy per conversion. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Also, fun fact. So, like at level 89, it's faster for me to make ruby porters than to make emeralds, even though it takes more energy. Fascinating. Uh, uh, when we get all of the buffs and like the actual late game stuff for divination turned out, like the, I think it's 94 archeology. span It's some, some ridiculous archeology span for that relic, uh, that, that will make that process a lot more straightforward. Yeah. That's like unlocking automation in Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> Big moves. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, anyway, like so what have we been doing this week? Pern, you got any stories for us? Uh, uh yeah, just leveling up everything, obviously. But uh, we, I, I picked up a couple of yaks uh, oh, a week or so oh. ago when uh-huh. you finally got the level <laughs> to unlock them. They were both females. So oh. I thought, you know, hey. I need to level up my, my ranging. So I'm just going to go... You 42 have... to 53 ranging was about three and a half k uh three and a half k kills not a single one now i thought the drop rate was one in a thousand and twenty four but Thaxi says it is one in three k so i'm sort of pretty much right on average so i might head yeah. back there it was um it was very good to unlock ricochet because then i didn't oh, have God, to sort yeah. of click every single one Honestly, uh, i've set it up where it just does it and i only really need to click every sort of every sort of 10th or 12th kill so that was that was are you uh are you at least using a uh, cannon for that no i don't like oh my god we definitely have the levels to unlock the media mauritania diary to smith's double to cannon oh yeah yeah no we we, we should be doing that i don't like cannons so You're wild the fan. only the only place I ever used the cannon was the uh, Eddie Moo dungeon. Really, I yep. I've never I used had, it anywhere else. Oh. <laughs> Slayer collecting champion scrolls, killing chompies, man. <laughs> my true grind was full of that thing. Uh, no, I killed I all my so chompies. Yeah, I killed all my chompies by myself. <laughs> Good on you. I would never. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember if I used the multi cannon or the. I think I did, not the, not the magic one, but the old back <laughs> coil. Uh, but either way, yeah, I will be. That will be featuring uh, heavily in my Slayer adventure. I appreciate. Just don't do it on my world. <laughs> I appreciate the yaks, and that kind of goes into what I've been yeah. doing uh, continually on the farming push. Uh, got to 71 organically, and it goes a lot quicker once you get things like the fast-breeding chinchampas going. And I really do want to add the, add the yaks into the mix, and then after that, the next milestone will be 81 for the mushroom people. Um, and then we can, and then we can, you know, get the story going from there and really, and really kick the... Uh, farm into high gear yeah the the dragon grind is gonna be fun because i remember when the pof came out i think i was there for probably six or seven hours at the blue dragons just trying to get my first eggs when the when the pof came out so uh yeah oh at at the moment go go ahead turn I was just at the moment, I am getting quite a few green dragon um, tasks, so I take those mm-hmm. every time. I do use porters for the uh, hides and just bank the Fair. bones, yep. uh, just so I don't have to bank as much. But uh, yeah, I, I was looking at the bone crusher. I'll get the bone crusher and just click the uh, pick up bones. But that's a that's an upgrade yeah. that you need from Ark with 2,500 
chimes and a whole bunch of taijutsu. And, <laughs> Yay! So, Everyone's uh, favorite piece hey. of content. Thank you, Avernick. I love the arc. <laughs> I do love the arc. I'm going to be honest with you. This is you so know, much I didn't, a thing. I didn't when it came out, but it's how I did 121 cutting. Yeah, it's but, good for a lot of training. Um, aside from um, that, I've been also on the push to uh, get 80 smithing. I'm presently 70, and uh, just in the process right uh, right now, actually, um, of mining the neck crate for that. And, you know, as, as things go in RS, you wind up finding these little distractions uh, along the way. I did the What's Mine is Yours quest, and then all eight of the Doric and Boric uh, mini quests after that for smithing bonus XP oh, to uh, speed that along. Yep. Oh yeah, eleven right. Eight eight Doric yeah. and three Boric. Crazy. Yep. Um, but um, you know what's interesting about this is that um, the quest one one of the one of the mini quests requires the Death Plateau quest, and mm-hmm. back on my main, I never did the quest that came out that replaced. The original Death Plateau. So that was oh. a that was a new experience for me this week, actually. On everything. Yeah. That's a fat XP lamp. Yeah. So mm. um nice. uh right. I, I I do need to go back and claim that to do the little extra thing because I just I just ran away after the quest was completed and I didn't do what it was. No, there's no that. extra thing, it's just the the quest rewards a ten thousand XP lamp. Oh, that's never mind. That's troll stronghold. My bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, that's that's an my action. brain. I did those. I did those two together. Never mind. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Um. But um. You know, with that, just generally good progress on the mining and smithing. Finished divination last weekend, so that was good. On that. Yes. Uh, but overall, still on that invention push, mainly to just unlock the uh, charge pack. And I'm I'm beginning to wonder, you know, was that was that kind of a, a mistake? Because I mean, it's it's nice to have one of us with an invention unlocked, but I guess it's just nice to have the have the option of having charge pack unlocked, right? Yeah. So for for me, it's not so much a charge pack. I want to get the uh, spring cleaner up and mm. running, which is level forty three, because mm. I do a lot of Slayer. So uh, it it. For Slayer, it is one of the best pieces of equipment you can get. Being able to decon low tier things at no cost is really yep. nice. <clears throat> I um if it helps no I mean, it's a lot of work and we can't wield a lot of augmented things, right? I don't think any of us are anywhere near seventy defense. Pern is definitely the closest. But uh six sixty nine uh, defense I am. Okay, so Pern can almost do it. Um, but in terms of like wielding augmented items and having items to augment, uh, mm. we're mostly we're like fishing rod automatic gamers for a while, I think. <laughs> um, with that said, you do get your set of purple augmented flowers, which you could put a mobile perk in, so you could have <laughs> that for like agility maybe or something <laughs> or questing. Uh, Yay, perks of having 80 and 3 skills. Here you go. Faster surge. <laughs> Smile. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, well, like you're saying, just being able to decon the little salvage we get and not have to bank it will be so yeah. nice. I actually do also want to pull something else uh, from the thing that I remember from this week, Taxi. What was the quest that you were doing that you found had uh, a herb lore option on that you were wondering about? For the lamp. Herblor. Oh, oh, the, um, gosh, yeah, there was a combat lamp from something that I was able to put on. What was that? Uh, I completed a quest. It gave me 10,000 XP and, an, and a combat lamp. And for some reason that included Herblor and Slayer. And, like, it was all of them. Uh, shoot. Hold on. Adventure log, maybe? Oh, was it Troll Romance? I think that might have been Troll... No. Not Troll Romance. Uh, Yeah, I just thought that was interesting because it's like, oh, okay, that that wasn't expected there. Um, But... Yeah, I am not sure. Because it doesn't appear on the uh, Herb Lore uh, list. Oh, it was the um um the 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 one that you unlock the uh, underwater uh, tutorial island thing is. What's the name of that quest? Oh, yeah, uh, beneath cursed tides. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, which as a reminder, we are, uh, you know, <laughs> for us it's November twenty seventh. Uh, make sure you go hmm. or twenty eighth in game. Uh, oyster, oyster resets in 
in like three days. A couple of days. Yep. And we've got a more, monthly reset more, token too. More fortunate fortu- fortu- components, please. Yep. More. I end of this I, week. I want I want a grace of the elves so badly. Oh, as soon as, as soon as manually is as soon as you get as soon as you get the level to sort of start making one of those, uh, I'll just ra- I don't want to run. Nine. Well, what I'll yeah. do for you in that case is before the month <laughs> rolls over, I will get thirty cooking, thirty magic, and thirty wood cutting because those are the only things I am missing to be able to do beneath cursed tides. Hmm. Nice. And no, but we've got a ton of the uh, the easy um, clue scrolls, which I haven't started doing just for bank space because oh, to yeah, get all the totally. uh, fortunate components. No, no. Uh, yeah, so I haven't started those yet. Uh, wait, simply wait until I can decal them before you start funneling. Exactly. Away. That's before exactly start, right. Yeah. So when I you when getting... you tell me, I'll start doing them. <laughs> what can I? Uh, what was giving me? There was a ton. Something that was giving me a ton of elites. I need to ju- I need to dump those I'm, in. I'm not, I'm not a, like, yeah, I'm not elite level yet. I know they're yet, the worst. <laughs> I know they're fortunate, the worst. But... Yeah, but see, they're my favorites, but for, for <laughs> fortunate components, in all honesty, yeah. easies Easy. are the best. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's 7 out of 10, you get a you get a fortunate component <laughs> in, in easies. Kind of crazy. It is. Uh, I know we've kind of meandered, uh, but Thaxi, what what do you got for, uh, what would you say your oh. big, big experience or story from I mean, the week is? Yeah, I, uh, of my like 90 or 100 hour crafting grind, I'm down to like 25 hours left. Uh, I've mined two thirds of the gems, all the gold. I've gotten all the energy to make the porters for the whole thing because contrary to my own advice, I am portering my gems because uh, I don't want to pay attention. <laughs> um, so there's that. I'm making 12,000 porters, by golly. I'm going to use 400 of them. That's allowed. Um, that's allowed. Yeah, that's what we're deciding. Um, so uh, gathered all my energy, made that first set of porters. I've I've made a few hundred necklaces, but yeah, the gold, I have a little over 6,000 of the gold bars barred. Um, so I need to finish the gold bars. I need to mine the last third of the gems. And then uh, make them, cut them all, make them all into necklaces, and that'll be invention. So that's what I've been doing this week. Uh, in in breaks between that, when I'm feeling awake and not distracted by fun on YouTube or whatever else, um, I have been uh, doing some questing. I'm trying to like slowly chip away at things. Um, I'm getting to the point where the quests I want to do are not reasonable quests for me to try to do. Um, like I am going to get walled by quest bosses, such as within the next couple of days. Oh, like desert treasure. Okay, like, fair. Uh, like I, I could potentially get to like I have I could get all of the levels and quests done. I'm like a dozen quests away. This is not happening soon, but I could get the quest done for desert treasure and re- the finishing recipe for disaster because I want those power gloves. I want them. Uh, Barrow's Gloves OP, uh, as always, as they have always been. Um, but that Kalerner Mancer fight, no prayer, no... I mean, it's just, that's gonna suck. Yeah, and that's been the and that's been the <laughs> recurring theme when it comes to quests with us is that you know we for the longest time have said that the RS three uh, quest stuff has gotten too easy, but the but the reality of it is is that Ooh. if you're leveling up. You know, there's you can yep, still no. you can still get slapped kind of hard, but then, like we were also I, talking monkey badness, we could probably do that with our current levels. So, well, I found something the other day with the life points hadn't been scaled at all, and it was like a it was some quest that was like large-ish. Was it? It wasn't fairy tale three. It was there was something that I was looking at the guide for, and I'm like, uh, maybe it was holy grail. It was like the the boss has like three thousand health. Oh, like, like, yeah, Black Knight. Yeah, Black Knight. <laughs> there's a few. You're just like you're supposed to be hard, and you're not. Um, I don't actually know if the bosses. I think all the Dominion Tower bosses at least have seen attention. Um, <clears throat> versus, like, I think, well, not all of them. Like, I think Tarn Razorlor is still kind of a baby, um, but. Yeah, I I, uh, I have a feeling that both Desert Treasure and RFD would kick my butt. But they're also on the, like, you know, 
They're on the group Iron Man achievements, which again, we need a bunch of quest points and total levels to push forward on anyways, so it's not the yeah, end of the world. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've, I've, I have 48 quest points. I will, I will get to oh, that eventually. As, as, as one of the leaders of clan quests, that's very disappointing. I know. I can't even join yeah. the clan yeah. with my current uh, stats. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, um, I'm one one ninety five quest points. I am. Oh, you can join. We, yeah, as a group, we are eight hundred total levels, one hundred and five quest points, and desert treasure away from our next journey tier. Yeah. So that's not too bad. Then, it's not too bad. The one after that will require killing all of the God Wars bosses, which I think will need more levels from a few of us. <laughs> Uh, and Path of Glow Fruit, which will be fine in the medium well, desert tasks. Yeah. See, that's going to yeah. be interesting because the T it went, when we were moving up, T70, you had to kill um, one of the bosses there in T70 Necro armor. So, oh, did we? <coughs> yeah, so... Oh, was I that for the power armor reward, though? Yeah, Did the tank armor right. require that? We might be able um, to get tier 70 weapons before we go. Because I think the tier 70, yeah. was it a barrows for the tank armor? Which we also need to do a bunch of barrows. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Uh, tier this 70, is, is been doing. Tier um, 70 tank armor is the wait, barrows. Yes. yes. Barrows. Okay. So what's the yeah. power armor? Um, it's it's, it's Mole and KQ. Oh. Okay. Oh. Maybe it's a tier 80. Then tier 80 yeah. is Nex and QBD power and <laughs> okay. all the all the God Wars 1 things with the sp- oh, spirit bound hammer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so okay. it's yeah, the tank. So so it's T eighty, um which you know I'm we'll I'm seventy two necro and sixty nine defense. So yeah, well, I'm not that thing. far off doing doing um because we doing do God have Wars. the uh the crafting and smithing level for it we actually can make that tier 80 equipment which is which mm. is crazy <laughs> so just gotta go anyway, gotta go um uh, the group Ironman is exciting and we're doing well <laughs> yeah and on may <laughs> this week i will say that at the very last few hours of double xp on sunday i hit 110 smithing Woo! And I actually overshot on the amount of bars and whatnot that I gathered, and I have enough to continue on uh, towards 120. But that'll wait until the next uh, double XP because I don't want to be I don't want to be smithing primals into into burials without double XP active on that. So uh, definitely no. not. No. Um, but I also uh, need to do need to give a shout out to the old school show because that's a big week over there this week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> lots of theory crafting being going on uh, for leagues five raging echo. So Sirion and I will be discussing that uh, come this Saturday. We had our uh, theory crafting episode last weekend. And I can say that this time I actually have a bit of a plan compared to uh, compared to last year. So we'll see how that goes. And if I'm as miserable by the end as I was miserable last year, <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll start that next week. I'm going to avoid the opening rush. I saw. I only checked a few times, but I did see a cap of 190,000 players online today. Holy so, crap! Last, last year the cap was 202. I believe was the was the highest player count of uh, of all time. And so they are. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if they overcapped that today. They may have. I think I checked right around five o'clock West Coast time was when I saw that 190. So there may have been a little earlier in the day where they were higher because <clears throat> that was, you know, 12 hours or 10 hours, you mean, hours it is after the update released. You mean but, highest of all time for old school, not RuneScape overall, right? Not actually because sure, I remember, probably not overall. I, yeah, I, I saw the highest, highest player like- count ever was the stat I saw. And again, that's a problem for the old school show. But yes, they've got <laughs> leagues running. Leagues are fun if you've never tried them. What regions are you going? Just log on and uh, yeet. <clears throat> uh, I put my plan in the Discord. I'm going to need to double check it because I, again, I'm not, I'll play it, but I'm not over the moon for this one. I love leagues, but I am having too much fun on the GIM and life is busy. Um, old school RuneScape. Ba, 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 ba. My plan is Varlamor to Desert Turnin, Range Masteries, uh, Power Miner, Dodgy Deals, Clue Compass, Reloaded with another Tier One, Production Master, Total Recall, Pocket Kingdom, and Last Stand. 
And if you want to know what all those are about and which ones you should choose, go listen to last week's episode of the Old School Show, update.show slash OS. Sell it! Let's go! <laughs> um, and just before we go, my regions yeah. this time will be Desert, Fremenic, and Kandarin. Okay. But, and my uh, region is Group Iron Man. Yeah, that's fair. Jimmy <laughs> All right. We'll be running in the background the whole time. Starting off with uh, some achievements this week, winding up uh, the double XP uh, achievements. Uh, we have a Donnie with 120 woodcutting on the 26th, as well as 120 crafting on the 25th. Meanwhile, Isk got 120 thieving on the 24th, and Aaron Dill 20 got 120 rune crafting. And moving on to November 22nd, we have Adani with 120 cooking, Higher Cliff, 200 mil construction, Pero Picanti picked up three uh, on the same day, 99 summoning, 99 magic, and 99 attack. Also, uh, and then on the 21st, we had Adani again with 120 mining. Look at them go. Daydreamer with 120 invention. Edict of Chaos with 120 Prayer, and Jadcor with 120 Attack. Lots of 120s. Good job, everybody. Strong work. Nicely done, everybody. Uh, what do you have for Pick of the Week, Thaxi? A book, I think it is, right? Yeah, I've been kind of... We had a power outage here last week. It was out for six days. It was not ideal. Oh, so that's a good um, time to read. Yes, <laughs> I finished several books. Um, I have a lot. One book... One book into the trilogy. The entire trilogy is out. The series is finished. It's called The Dragon's Blade um, by Michael Miller. He's a like a smaller fantasy author I hadn't really heard of before. Um, but he's based out of the UK. Uh, this is this was one of his earlier series or a series. He's I think he's on series number like three now. This is one of the first two. Um, <clears throat> but it's it's not like super long as fantasy series go. It's about fifteen hundred pages combined for all three books they they are sold as a singular novel or singular book so you can get it for relatively cheap um the story very generally like we're thinking high fantasy so unique world and magic system um <clears throat> the prince of the dragons who have uh, devolved over time and are basically now just like captain america superhuman level peoples um the uh, alliance of the dragons, humans, and fairies are being attacked by demons, and the dragon prince, who is a prideful dickbag, um, <clears throat> gets mortally wounded. I will tell you about fifty pages in. Oh like, wow! It is relatively early. He's a dink, um, and they like um, as part of that, he a wizard resets him basically turns him into a child and tele like teleports him off to be raised by humans. And so like within the first like 20% or so of the first book, you have like, you've set up this character, killed the character effectively uh, <laughs> and have him grown 20 years raised by humans uh, where his birthright comes back. And now the demonic forces, which have been kind of at bay for 20 years for reasons we don't really understand the same 20 <laughs> years, it's been very lucky. Um, and again, unique magic system, the whole nine yards, it, uh, like, <clears throat> they become more active again. And so, you know, he's revealed to be the prince and they go, or now king, and they go through this whole arc. Um, the story has a number of kind of twists and turns in it that you might be able to figure out and feel very clever for, or you might uh, not. Uh, and then just as they get revealed that I have really much enjoyed reading it because it's it's uh, relatively friendly, all things told. Um, it is light reading, similar to a lot of high fantasy. You've got, I think, three or four character perspectives in total. And you're keeping track generally of what's going on around the world without too much, you know, like it's it's just light fantasy reading and it's good. If you're just looking for something to dive into that's a complete series, relatively cheap, without too much like 15,000 pages a piece kind of nonsense, um, it's a good option. So it's something digestible then for somebody looking to get yes. into genre, you'd say? Uh, I mean, it's, 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 still, it's still high fantasy. Like you have to be, you know, understand that you're getting into very much fantasy books, but yeah. But not it's, not as not as uh, not it's not as a huge heavy or as controversial as J R as uh, George R R Martin. Yes, and <laughs> it's finished. Unlike the Winds of Winter, which is somewhere. 
somewhere. <laughs> uh, oh, this one is actually done. You can pick good. it up and then read the whole thing in a weekend if you wanted to. So yep. there you go. That's no, I'm I've one book in. So far, it's good. There's your recommendation for the week. Yep. I'm into these type of books, so I'll pick that one up. Right on. Sounds Excellent. good. Michael R. Miller, the Dragon's Blade trilogy linked in the show notes over at update.show. But that pretty much brings us to the end of the episode this week. We're going to be here, of course, next week for uh, RuneScape's Christmas update and continued discussions on the group Iron Man and just how uh, that is going as we uh, get into some more PVM and higher level Slayer and I... Uh, I I get some quest points. I should get some quest points, shouldn't I? I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Questing is fun. The quest rewards are are a lot of XP. Yeah, of course. Quest remember, XP, remember from a few weeks point. back, quests are fun for everyone. Questing is fun for yes. everyone. I mean, <laughs> even like you, you just do Merlin's Crystal and uh, the Holy Grail. I think that's nine quest points. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. To short <laughs> I, I think I, I think I did those on day one, you know? honestly. But <laughs> probably. But Goblin anyway. Village is five, I think, yeah. for some godforsaken reason. Or Goblin I Diplomacy. know there are some. There are some. You <laughs> sit there going, "How Thunder is that Ground. worth that many points?" Uh, it's just <laughs> the original quests have too much. That's all. But yes, that's it. Uh, if you guys want that episode when it arrives for next week to hear the group Iron Man progress or what's happening. Uh, in the Christmas event, update.show slash subscribe. Click on your favorite podcast listening service. They're all there. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, and of course YouTube at youtube.com slash RSBNB. But with that being said, we'll be back next week for another episode of RSBNB Update. Thank you, Pern, and thanks you for being here. We'll see you all then. Take care. Ciao. Happy Skype and all.